Hey, what's up you guys? It's your girl Tori back with another video. So a few videos back, I had told y'all that I was diagnosed with POTS and that I was going to give you a little informational video. Um, so that's what we're doing. So I have 15 facts about POTS. I switched it to 13 because 15 was too long. Anyways, let's just get into the video. Okay, so fact one, we're gonna start off simple. Y'all keep hearing me say pots, 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 I have pots. You're probably like, girl, pots, what? Pots and pants? No, not pots and pants. Pots stands for postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. I know a mouthful. That's why a lot of us shortened it and call it pots. So you're like, okay, postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, got it. That means nothing to me, girl. What is that? I'm so glad you asked. So to put it simply, POTS pretty much just means that when you're changing positions, so for instance, going from sitting to standing, laying down to sitting up, your heart rate your heart rate will increase more than normal. I believe 30 to 40 beats per minute is the like diagnosis criteria. Uh, 30 to 40 beats increase. It, it also means you have a lower blood volume. It can cause uh, excessive um, pooling, like in your lower extremities when you stand up. Mm -hmm. And it uh, actually also means that you have elevated levels of specific hormones, specifically epinephrine and norepinephrine. So that's fun. <laughs> okay so fact two kind of goes a little bit more in depth and plays off of fact one so POTS is a disorder of the autonomic nervous system the ANS and that's the nervous system that controls the like vital functions of your body so blood pressure heart rate, all the good stuff to keep you alive and well. Um, and it also may be an autoimmune condition. They're looking into that. So, fun. Fact, fact three is... Sorry. I... Okay, moving on with fact three. POTS, uh, even though a lot of people have not heard of it, it's actually not rare. Um, it affects one to three million Americans alone. Uh, 80 to 85% of those are female, of uh, most commonly of childbearing age. Yay. Um, and it actually is more common than uh, MS, multiple sclerosis, uh, which is very interesting considering not a lot of people know about it. Fact four is that the majority of POTS patients are actually hypovolemic, hypovolemic uh, even though we get adequate hydration. So that pretty much just means that we have low blood volume. Um, and we are typically deficient in RBC, so red, bl red blood cells, and in plasma. Fact five, POTS is often misdiagnosed. I actually have uh, a lot of friends who have gone through this. The average time for diagnosis is five years and 11 months. That's a long time, y'all. And another thing is 85% of POTS patients are actually, uh, and unfortunately, told that it is all in their head. POTS. 
85% of POTS patients are told it is all in their head. Sorry? Like, that's crazy. And research has been done into this and it shows that POTS, pa POTS patients are no more likely to have a psychiatric disorder than healthy uh, people. So that's crazy. And a lot of my friends have actually experienced this. And a lot of us actually go through this where we try, like we convince ourselves that it is in our head. And it's not, y'all. It's an actual syndrome. It's It's actually something having to do with your health health your physical health so that's just absolutely crazy 85 percent that's that's unacceptable y'all like that's crazy um we need to do better so moving on fact six is that the severity of pots actually um varies approximately 25 percent of pots patients are so disabled that they can't uh, attend school or hold a job uh, and it has been compared to COPD and congestive heart failure so that's pretty crazy especially when you know you've heard the previous fact of a lot of people being told it's all in their head that's that's a little wild Okay, so fact seven is that POTS can actually develop gradually over time or it can develop suddenly. For me, uh, personally, it developed over time. It was years and years and years of, you know, having symptoms and stuff like that and then going to the doctor uh, when, you know, the symptoms began to be too much uh, and then being diagnosed with POTS. Um, but uh, again, it can be gradually or, or suddenly. So it's important to keep that in mind. So fact eight is fun. Um, I have a list of the symptoms. Um, and I will put on the screen, as I mentioned them, which ones I personally experience. Uh, so this will be fun. I, I have the list here. So you girls going to have to look at the list. So we got dizziness or lightheadedness, especially when standing up and during prolonged periods of standing or like just when you're up and, and moving a lot. Um, I have it. Fainting or near fainting. Uh, so near fainting, presyncope and fainting syncope. Uh, <laughs> forgetfulness and trouble focusing uh, also known as brain fog <laughs> heart palpitations or racing heart <laughs> exhaustion or fatigue uh, feeling nervous or anxious <laughs> shakiness and excessive sweating uh, as y'all know I naturally shake a lot uh, and I have excessive sweating uh, <laughs> Uh, okay, let's continue with the symptoms. Shortness of breath, mm, chest pains, mm, headaches, mm, feeling sick and nauseous, mm, <laughs> bloating, sometimes. Um, a pale face and purple discoloration of your hands and feet uh, when they're lower than because they're lower than the level of your heart. I actually don't have that one to change. And disruption of sleep from chest pains, racing heart, and excessive sweating. So those are fun. Um, and I'm sure those, there's probably more, uh, but those are the most common ones. Um, yay. <laughs> So, fact nine is that these symptoms can get worse in specific situations. So, for instance, in warm environments, which is great because I live in Texas. <laughs> uh, 
fun when you're standing frequently or with strenuous exercise uh there's actually like exercise that specifically that a lot of pots patients do so exercise like when you like on the floor uh when you're sick uh and um if uh, a fun one is uh when you're on a period and menstruation cycle which is so fun considering uh a lot of POTS patients are women. Yay. Um, lucky us. And also if uh, fluid and salt intake is not adequate. So stuff is like skipping a meal. Which I personally have tend to do because I just forget to eat. Um, but yeah. So hydration is key y'all. Speaking of which. You like my water cup? It's like the ones you get in the hospital. I bought it from Five and Below though. I didn't take the hospital one home. Fact 10 is there are different types of POTS. There are subtypes. So there's neuropathic POTS, which is associated with damage to small fiber nerves in your body. There are Hypoadrogenergic. Oh, you girl is saying it. I must have. Hyperadrogen. Adrogen. <laughs> I can't say it. Hypoadrogenergic pots, which is pots associated with elevated levels of. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Uh, it's pots associated with abnormally low levels of blood, so hypovolemia, which I mentioned earlier. And secondary POTS, which means that it's associated with another condition. Moving right along to fact 11 is uh, about how it is diagnosed. So the main way that it is diagnosed is through a tilt table test, which I will show y'all right now. So yeah, that's a tilt table test. Fun. That's how I was diagnosed. Um, I hated it so much. I uh, literally just going from laying down when they tilted the table up. I was like, I'm like head and entire. Can y'all lay me down? <laughs> uh, it's also um, blood and urine tests can be done for causes of POTS and uh, to see if you have a condition that mimics POTS and it's not. Pot specifically uh, there's also the QSART which is a test that measures uh, autonomic nerves that control sweating I also did that which they put like little like pads on you and they like shock you a little bit like just a little bit it was interesting it was a very odd experience I actually have a video of me during it which I'll put here Anyways, there's also a TST, which is a tuberculin skin test. Uh, you can do a skin nerve biopsy and echocardiogram, which I did, and blood volume with hemodynamic studies. So, there's a whole bunch of stuff, uh, which is fun. Okay, so the treatment is... It's a lot of time there. I mean, there is medicine that you can take and that you may be prescribed or that a pot patient may be uh, prescribed. But there's also a lot of stuff that you can actually do, which is exercising, um, which, you know, is good to do whether you have pots or not. Exercise is great. And uh, like managing and adjusting your diet and nutrition. Uh, fun fact, as I mentioned earlier, hydration is key and very important. It is actually suggested that a POTS patient takes in 64 to 80 ounces, which is approximately uh, two to two and a half liters of um, liquids a day. Preferably water, guys. Preferably water, uh, which is why I have my cup. Moving right along. So prognosis for POTS guys if you get diagnosed for POTS don't freak we are expected to have normal lifespans prognosis is generally good it can 
disrupt, you know, your like way of life and how you do certain things. But like you're good. Like don't freak out. Don't freak out. You're gonna be okay. Uh, and actually, also, uh, in approximately eighty percent of cases, the condition improves over time, which is very cool. The main, like, the biggest risk to people with POTS is getting hurt if you faint and fall. Um, but, you know, just being mindful of that and if you're starting to feel lightheaded, sit down, you know, you can avoid that. Okay guys, that is the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you made it to the end. I know it was a little bit of a long video, but there was like a whole bunch of interesting stuff to go over. Uh, if y'all want more videos on POTS or like day in the life of someone with POTS and how it affects my life, like comment down below and let me know like i feel like that would be an interesting video uh, i hope you learned something but uh really thank y'all so much for watching don't forget to like and subscribe turn on the bell for notifications for whenever i post a video have a great day or night or evening you know yeah. um yeah love y'all so much thanks bye Why do I have all the syndromes and disorders that have more complicated names?